Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. Uh, Coinbase has sued the SEC. That news broke just a couple days ago. And I want to provide some perspective from a couple attorneys who have been speaking about this, including one who's speaking on whether or not this would perhaps impact what's happening in the SEC v. Ripple case. Uh, so I've got comments from attorney James Murphy, who goes by the name Meta Lawman on Twitter, as well as some comments from attorney John Deaton. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, look, I, I, I'm i thrilled to see Coinbase, oh, I'm thrilled to see any entity, frankly, uh, you know, go on offense against the SEC, which has just been devastating the investors that it's, you know, it's... it's his mission is to protect. It's been devastating investors. In, you know, in the world of crypto, like, we are the enemy of the SEC. It's just, it's so upside down. It's hard to believe that this is real life. So love seeing any firm go after them. Now, in the case of Coinbase, I'm not exactly thrilled by a lot of the things that, that, uh, that they've done. I mean, let's not forget, even if you, and I know everybody's got different opinions on this, you know, as far as whether or not Coinbase, we should be actually offended by them, you know, delisting XRP. I've said my piece on that so many times, I'm not going to repeat it here. But even if you set that aside, the delay in getting flair to uh, the XRP holders, uh, the, the, um, just the the theft of Songbird tokens that they haven't hand out, handed out to uh, XRP holders, though, that airdrop, and it looks like they have no intention of doing. And uh, it's nice to see a, uh, that they're actually getting sued by XRP community member and attorney Fred Rispoli. So we'll see what happens on that. Maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So I, I, I appreciate that as well. But I, I just, I'm not happy with Coinbase, but still, I will admit that I'm very happy to see this because the SEC needs to be ringed in. And if Congress isn't going to take action, and they're not, certainly not anytime soon, that could be years away. Uh, all right, we'll use the legal system. And so here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. XRP community celebrates as it gets major support against the SEC. Supporters of XRP jubilate as Coinbase sues the Securities and Exchange Commission. The news of San Francisco-based exchange Coinbase suing the Securities and Exchange Commission has sparked widespread jubilation in the XRP community. For context, Coinbase filed a lawsuit against the SEC in the U.S. Circuit Court yesterday. The suit follows a petition for a rulemaking that the leading cryptocurrency exchange filed with the SEC last July, requesting that the regulator draft and approve regulatory guidance for the crypto industry. A Coinbase intends to compel the securities regulatory agency to respond yes or no to a set of questions via the lawsuit. A Coinbase's chief legal officer, Paul Gruel, shared the development. I'm going to share with you exactly what he had to say. So again, this is Paul Gruel, chief legal officer at Coinbase. He wrote, uh, Today we filed a narrow action in the U.S. Circuit Court to compel the SEC to respond yes or no to a rulemaking petition we filed with them last July, asking them to provide regulatory guidance for the crypto industry. The SEC is required by law to respond to petitions within a reasonable time, but they have not yet responded to our petition from last July, which is why we filed our action in court today. It's obvious that there's a lack of clarity among our regulators regarding crypto, as even the chair of the SEC has declined to say which crypto assets are securities? And then uh, I'll just pause to note that Paul Gruel was retweeting something from the Unusual Whales Twitter account. It was a, uh, a clip of uh, uh, Representative McHenry, who was absolutely grilling Gary Gensler. I covered it at the time. It was just from last week. And it just, it just re Gary Gensler refusing to state whether ETH is or is not a security. And if, if things are as clear as Gary Gensler said, that, that should be a very easy question to answer. You know, I, look, I understand there are over 20,000 cryptocurrencies in existence. I don't think that it would be reasonable to expect, uh, even Kim jong Ginzer, who I despise, I, it wouldn't be reasonable to expect him to be able to know, like, just right off the top of that, this, that, you know, what you're talking about, all 20,000 cryptocurrencies, whether or not they are or are not securities. Uh, so I, I wouldn't expect that. But when you're talking about ETH, this is something that's well known. The facts and circumstances are well known by him. We know that because he talked about, we see, we've got videos of him talking about ETH, you know, from close to half a decade ago. And so you're talking about the second largest cryptocurrency in terms of market cap, 
There, there should be no ambiguity. They're, they're really like he should absolutely be able to answer yes or no. So again, I can answer. If you're asking about uh, is crypto number twenty thousand five hundred eighty nine in market cap is that a security? Well, he probably hasn't even heard of the damn thing. But if you're talking about ETH, there is no excuse. He already has spoken about Bitcoin. And it was a delight actually seeing him again, and he brought this up, and I've I mentioned this before on my channel, but to see this thrown in Gary Ginzer's face, because Gary Ginzer will say, well, I'm not going to speak about the specifics of any one crypto, and he's like, but you did with one, you did with Bitcoin, which I brought up so many times, it was just nice to see him getting grilled like that, but he just won't do it about ETH, it's completely unacceptable. And then Paul Gruel said, the crypto industry and its users need clear laws and rules to follow that are built for a new technology. Enforcement actions based in inapplicable securities law aren't the answer. And so look, even though I'm not exactly thrilled with Coinbase at the moment, I can get behind this. We, we should all be able to get behind this. Uh, so now let me share with you perspective from attorney James Murphy, who goes by Meta Lawman on Twitter. And here's what he had to say about this. Here's what you should know about the Coinbase suit against the SEC. This will move fast, unlike the Ripple case. This case begins in the appellate court, not the trial court. There will be no discovery, depositions, and document exchange. Just briefing and a hearing. Coinbase has an all-star legal team led by Eugene Scalia, former uh, Secretary of Labor and son of deceased Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Scalia has experience defeating government agencies, including the SEC, in court. The petition filed yesterday is quite persuasive. Coinbase is seeking a writ of mandamus, which is a court order compelling the SEC to do its job and announce a decision on Coinbase's request for rulemaking. The action does not necessarily affect the SEC's timing for suing Coinbase, as it has threatened to do. I expect major industry players to pile in with amicus briefs supporting Coinbase's position. We might also see the House Financial Services Committee or individual members uh, come in with briefs in support of Coinbase. The SEC commissioners will have to approve any response to Coinbase's action. There's a tiny chance the SEC will blink and agree to engage in rulemaking. If just one commissioner withdraws their support for Gary Gensler's regulation by enforcement strategy, he's done. Now, let's pause and note, yes, that's obviously true. I'm just not optimistic that it's going to happen because a lot of what's going on here just seems to be among party lines at, at this day and age, unfortunately. That's what it looks like anyway. And then uh, James Murphy wrote, while Coinbase's action does not directly affect pending SEC cases against Ripple slash XRP, Bitrix and others, it does a great job of shining a spotlight on the SEC's contradictory positions about of its authority uh, to regulate digital assets. Other judges will take note. So we'll, we'll see what, look, I, I understand, and you all know, like, just how horrendous the SEC is. I just, I don't believe that they'll be able to continue forever uninterrupted behaving like this harming the the entire asset class the crypto asset class i just i don't see that happening you know so even if it's going to be a mess for a number of years because we're not getting proper uh, you know, proper guidance from congress which is really where this all is supposed to start uh, you're not you're not going to be able to crush this asset class forever it's just i don't believe that for a moment so, look, we're on the right side of history. We just have to continue to be patient. Now, here's what Attorney John Deaton had to say in response to this news breaking a couple days ago. Uh, John Deaton wrote, The Coinbase filing today is the second writ of mandamus filed involving crypto. I love the petition because I filed crypto's first writ of mandamus when I sued the SEC asking a judge to order the SEC to do its job and amend the Ripple complaint to only include direct sales by Ripple. I argued the SEC lawyers lacked the good faith required to argue that secondary market sales of XRP offered completely independent from Ripple were also securities. The SEC can't cite one case in 76 years since Howey was decided that suggests otherwise. My writ of mandamus was always going to fail, not because the SEC had a good argument on secondary sales, 
but because of separation of powers. A judge was likely going to tell me that the SEC is part of the executive branch and how it chooses to allege and file a case is discretionary. I was going to argue the SEC's decision was a gross abuse of discretion and there was evidence of potential wrongdoing. But the point of the writ of mandamus, for me, was more strategic than legal. I was forcing the SEC to respond and act, knowing that when they do, they screw up. The writ ultimately helped us become amicus, and we helped exclude an expert as well as other things, e.g. 3,500 affidavits. I've read the Coinbase writ. It is on target, and I'm predicting a win just like I predicted early on that Grayscale would win regarding a Bitcoin spot ETF. I researched Mandamus Ritz two and a half years ago. Coinbase is on solid legal ground here. Over a year ago, I said the crypto industry will win in court. The SEC does not have the law on its side. And the facts the SEC has created the last six years puts them on the losing side. See, and I, th I think that insight is spot on and, and it's rather telling. And so that's why I was saying that, you know, just a couple minutes ago, even though we're not getting this handled the way that we would have liked, which is, you know, starting with Congress and making sure that it's understood who's in charge of what, that would be a good first step. Uh, when it comes to the courts, I, I do believe that mostly uh, what should be done is done in terms of ruling. Like the, in, no justice system is perfect, but in the United States here, honestly, it's pretty good. Sometimes there are true travesties, complete injustice. I get that. But you know, the judges here, they're unbiased blank templates by and large. And, and so when a crypto case is brought to them, they're just going to do their, their judge thing. That's pretty much it. And it's very clear. Like when you, with the SEC being as wrong as they are on a whole host of topics having to do with various crypto uh, assertions, it, it's no wonder that they've been getting devastated in court. And even all the way up to uh, the, the level of the Supreme Court. And I think that the, what was the most recent number? I remember I, I covered this in a video. I think it was um, five of the last six, and this is actually, this part's not just crypto, but five of the last six rulings at the Supreme Court level with the SEC, five of the last six the SEC lost. So how do you get to that point where you make it to the Supreme Court and then you just consistently lose now? And I think the answer is that, I mean, the, the ego of these people, to just think that you can get away with anything, and then they're part of their own little stupid-ass echo chamber where they, you know, they, they, they believe uh, the hype of how awesome they are, I guess, but they're not. So <laughs> it's just eventually reality catches up with you. And so that's why they're having all these losses. And you can look at what happened with the, you know, the Voyager case and Grayscale and all, all the other ones on the lower court levels. It's, it's very telling. So you look at how the SEC is operating. They're going to lose ultimately. What should be done will ultimately be done. I firmly believe that's what's most probable. So we have to sit tight, unfortunately, while we're being harmed by the entity that's supposed to be protecting us. But then's the breaks. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.